Hi, I'm Stuart Shepard. This is Stoplight. There's a big move underway to get evangelicals involved in the fight against global warming. Whew, man, it is hot out here. Oh, wait, I forgot. It's summer. Before you climb on the global warming bandwagon with all the doom and gloomers, here are five questions you should ask yourself. Number five. Everybody seems to be worried about the polar bears drowning if the North Pole melts, but scientists say the Arctic Ocean has melted before. Why doesn't anybody think they'll have the good sense to go rent that condo in Siberia like they did last time? Number four. We always hear the temperature is about one degree warmer than it was in 1900, but the global temperature has always gone up and down, warm spells and ice ages. Why should we assume that the temperature in 1900 was normal, or that the era in which we happen to live also happens to be the optimal temperature for the planet to thrive? Number three. Last year, NBC Nightly News chief science correspondent Bob Bazell did a seriously one-sided report about global warming. When Brian Williams asked him about it on the air, Bazell likened skeptics to people who believe the Earth is flat. What are the odds that NBC will ever present a fair, balanced, unbiased report on global warming? Number two. The global climate involves a complex relationship between the sun, the land, and the oceans. If we aren't really all that impressive at predicting the weather, and we have no skill at all at predicting what the sun or the oceans will do, why would anyone claim that we can predict the global climate 50 or 100 years into the future? Number one. Some of the leading advocates of global warming alarmism live in huge mansions that consume lots of energy, and they fly to their speaking engagements in jets. They tell us they buy carbon credits to offset their excesses, and for some reason nobody giggles when they say that. But if they were really sincere about saving the planet, wouldn't they live in a tent, ride a bicycle everywhere, and buy those carbon credits? That way they'd have twice the impact. Perhaps the Earth would be better off if the people who claim to be carbon neutral were baloney neutral.